Okay, these are the two effects I'm going to show you how to make today. And it's just the uh, tears um, that you can put on somebody's face or body. Uh, you can also use this for um, any type of dripping. Uh, it's just another water effect uh, with a little bit of noise and um, stroke exposure. Able to create this. And then the other thing is just going to be just noise. It's th this is just... <laughs> two shapes with the uh, layer set to multiply and a little bit of noise which literally takes uh, 10 seconds or so to to make um, I just added those veins glowing or pulsating just for extra effect and uh, so yeah that's that's it all right let's get right into it so the first thing I'm going to show you is how to make uh, tears in anime studio and I'm going to use an anime picture that I found on Google and uh, first thing we're going to do is just uh, create a vector layer and we'll call it tears and go ahead select the uh, pencil tool and or the freehand tool and if you want uh, select the freehand options and then change the smoothing so it's a little bit higher like either towards the middle or to the uh, right. So when you draw, your curves are a lot smoother. So let's go in here and uh, the vector layer is above my picture right now. I'm just gonna draw a line underneath the eyeball where tears would form and go down to the center and then go down the cheek and then just stop at the end of the cheek right there. Now. Um, you don't need this many vertices so we can use this uh, point reduction tool and just uh, paint on it a little bit just to get rid of some of those points and I'm gonna hit T and I'm gonna spread these points out just a little bit more and then I'm going to select all of them by hitting command A and hitting W or selecting the width tool line width tool right here and we're just gonna uh, left click and drag to the right just so we can see the path. Now let's um, change the uh, tier or the stream actually to look more realistic. We're gonna hit W again and I'm going to left click and drag to the left to make the endpoint really small and I'm just gonna reshape this just so I get some variety in the line. So we'll just make it thin right there, um, thin here, and then leave this kind of looking like a drop at the end. We'll pull that over, do like that, and make that a little thicker. And if you really want the tear to pool under the eye, you can just make that bigger like that. And then that's it. We have our tear stream. Now we need to make it look like it's an, uh, actually like water instead of this blue color. So go ahead and hit Q and then select your stroke. And with the stroke selected, we're going to come over here to the stroke fill, click on that and select white. And then we're going to make it almost transparent. So drag the transparency of it down to almost the bottom, like right Mm, there and hit OK and then we also want to with it still selected you can see it's selected because of the, the checkered pattern on it um, select the effect and then do shaded and it looks like it turned it black but it's actually just putting a little edge of black on it so let's just see oh, let's offset it just a, a few pixels so about five maybe and turn the blur almost all the way off. So we'll just have it like, let's just do one and hit OK. And then we'll just see what it looks like. So I'm going to Command R to render. And then now you can see it's almost see through. You can see a little white here, but then you can also see a little black. So it looks a little bit like water um, coming down, which is what we want. So now that we have it looking like tears, let's go ahead and draw some more streams. You can do as many as you want. Make sure you're on frame zero. We'll 
go back to zero and grab the freehand tool and we're just going to draw some more uh, streams like that that and we'll just have five for now um, and I'm going to hit T and we'll go ahead and hold shift down and select the other uh, streams we made and then hit W and turn those all up so that you can see them and then go ahead and start reshaping them again so for the edge make this hit W pull that way down so it's curved like that and then we'll move some of these points around put this here hit W make it thinner on the cheek down to a drop looking like a drop and come over to this eye make all the edges really thin so it looks like it's coming out of like the tear ducts of the eye and you might want to when you have a point selected hit delete and get rid of some of these points too so hit T and then select some of those points and just delete them keep on uh, changing the width until you get it right. Like that. Get rid of some of these points. Especially down at the bottom because you want it to look like a teardrop so you only need one close to the bottom. So you can make those... Oops. Okay, now let's make a little bit of movement. We'll select all, Command A, double click the tiers layer, select vectors, then select noisy outlines and animated noise. And you can see the fill and the line are previewed right here, or shaky. Um, we'll go ahead and turn this down just a little bit, maybe to uh, about five. Hit apply and okay. And if we play this animation, now it already looks like tears kind of because of the noise, but let's go ahead and animate the tears falling too. So I'll go to frame zero, select the stroke exposure tool, which is this button right here. And then while we're on frame zero, go ahead and click and drag to uh, left click and drag to the left. And this pulls the tears all the way back to this beginning point. Then we'll go to frame 18 or so doesn't really matter where and then we'll just click on the canvas again with the stroke exposure tool so it's gonna have this is gonna be its beginning point and then we'll go to frame uh, 48 and then left click and drag to the right so there the tears become fully exposed or the lines like that and then to make it look like they're falling, so you can you can either leave it so that they look like they're just streaming down, or you can make them fall. So we'll go in between where they start and where uh, it's fully exposed, like 36. And then we'll go to the start percentage and then change that by clicking on it using your mouse wheel and then turning uh, turning the mouse wheel. You can see how it's making the start disappear. So then it looks like it's dropping. So we can go to frame 54, a little bit past where it stops, and then change the percentage again so it keeps they keep falling, and then disappear. So now we have tears streaming down, like that. And they're all doing it at the same time, so you can just offset them by, um, go ahead and hit T, click on any one of the, the streams, and then grab just the uh, red keyframes. So it's it's going to select just this this stroke. If you do the uh, black ones, it's going to move everything. So go ahead and just grab the red keyframes, pull those over anywhere, and then it'll just animate at a different pace or at a different time. So you can move. Oops. Move the red, and we'll do it 
grab this one and we'll grab the red and move it maybe closer. Grab this one, move this, and you can actually speed it up if you hold Option down and drag. It'll push the uh, keyframes together or pu pull them apart. So let's just go at a different pace. And if you want to, you can cycle through these. And so the tears just keep coming out. And let me play that real quick, make sure they're all. There we go. So it doesn't look like much now, but if I go in the timeline and render it, it's a little hard to see. But let's go ahead and render this out real quick. I'm just going to do 100 frames. And call this tears. Replace that because I already did it once just to make sure it looked okay. And hopefully you guys can see this in the video, but that looks looks like tears, like water. Ish. So you can use this technique also for sweat. Um, if you want sweat dripping down, if you want a leaky pipe or anything like that. Let me just play this a couple times and so there it is. Um let me do this also. Uh Japanese anime loves to uh use little tricks to make it look like there's more action in a scene than there is. So what we'll do is we'll create a new group. And you guys have seen me do this several times if you've watched any of my videos. Uh, we'll make a group. We'll put the tears and the uh, um, picture in the group. We'll click on the group. Go to frame one. Use the transform layer tool. Click on it. That creates a keyframe for the movement of everything. And then we'll right click on that and add noise. So go to noisy and make sure you turn the amplitude down to zero or 0 0.01. You don't want it shaking around too much, but you want to just add a little drama. And if it's shaking too much, go ahead and turn the scale up. So it's just moving just a little bit. And I'm going to go back to frame zero. I'm just going to make the whole scene a little bigger. So I'll just pull that out just so it's doesn't get cut off on the edges and we'll just play that and if you guys watch anime you know they use this type of stuff a lot where it's just a still picture that has a few elements added to it sometimes it's tears sometimes it's hair waving um, oh here's another one trick they use a lot is to we'll add another vector layer just above the uh, tears I'm going to zoom in real quick, Oops. use the create shape tool, and we'll use a circle, and there's no stroke on right now, so I'll just draw a circle here for uh, reflection in the eyes, and then another one right there, maybe one more, then I'm going to hit G, select all three of the, or all three of the circles. Go to frame one, hit T, so it selects all of those. I'm just going to move it a little bit so it creates a keyframe and put noise on this also. So we'll do noisy, 0 0.01, and then we'll turn the scale up. Let's see how that looks. So I'm gonna play it a little bit. So now you've got a reflection in the eyes. Let's turn the scale down so it moves a little faster. There we go. So we have that. Let's go to frame zero again. Reflection. Let's call that reflection. I'm going to duplicate it, move it over, put it on this side, and play. Now we have tears, uh, reflections in the eyes, and the canvas is moving. So it all adds to uh, make it look more realistic. I'll render that one more time. And
Yeah, like I said, if you can just imagine this with a little bit of uh, dramatic um, music and some, some noise, it really kind of brings it to life, even though it's just a still picture. So I hit play and loop it. So now you can see tears coming down and the uh, reflection in the eyes. Probably could blur that a little bit to make that look better too. But yeah, that's it. That's it for tears and sweat. And um, I'm actually gonna do just the exact same thing for blood. I'll, I'll leave the reflection in there. I'll turn the tears off. Add another layer on frame zero. And we'll just call this blood. And this one's even simpler. This is just noise. Just like the faucet in the uh, water tutorial I did. So we'll call that blood. We'll create a new shape. We'll use a rectangle. And let's change the fill to red. And maybe a little darker. And we'll start drawing a square. I'll hit A to add some points. T to move the points. A. And then C will curve the points. And I'm just going to make it look like a really thick <laughs> amount of blood is coming out of the eyes. You know, if you're making a horror uh, type uh, animation or something like that, you can just do this real quick. So we'll do that. I'll select everything, just clicking on it. Do a Command C, Command V to copy and paste. I'll flip it over. Rotate it a little bit. Hit T. Move some of these points just so we get to the uh, shape correct around the bottom of the eye. Move some of these points around. And we'll double click on the blood layer. Click on uh, vectors again and noisy fills this time instead of outlines since we're not doing the stroke. And animate noise and apply. And if we play it, now it looks like the blood's trickling down even though it's just moving around the red. And also let's go ahead and change the layer blending mode to multiply and blur Blur it just a little bit, go to Blur Radius, and we'll just do like uh, two, and apply. So when I render this out, it just is more see-through. You can see some of the uh, artwork, the eyelids, and um, makes it look more like it's part of the scene, even though it's a separate layer. So it kind of blends into the eyes. And we have our uh, reflections and the shaking of the whole scene so we can render this out again let's call this blood let that render real quick and yeah this really I'm sure this tutorial seems pretty long, but that really only takes a few minutes to do, uh, especially if you've done it a couple times. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of different techniques that anime uses to kind of not cut corners, but just to make um, their scenes more dynamic. So there's same exact scene, but now we just added some noise to a couple of shapes, and it looks looks pretty good oops let that play for a little bit so yeah if you have any questions on how to make uh, any type of uh, tears or water dripping or things like that I guess this is technically this is another <laughs> water tutorial um, but yeah if you have any questions or comments just leave them down below thanks <laughs>